Today we're going to try out this professional french fry cutter, we're going to use this gadget to peel potatoes super quickly, and then we're going to test this 8-in-1 kitchen utensil gadget. Once we open up the french fry cutter, this is what we get. You can see it's a pretty solid, industrial looking utensil. And to use it, it first requires a little assembly. They supply some bolts, and we just need to connect these linkages. One slides through at the bottom, the next one connects a little higher up, and we need to tighten up the nuts and you can now see a bit clearer how it's going to work. And the last thing to do is screw the handle on, like this. So there we go, it's like a big pushing plunger with a long lever handle to operate it. The pushing plate slides along four runners, two on either side, and it feels pretty nice and smooth. And the idea is it pushes the produce through the cutting blades here at the front. There's a suction cup here at the rear of the base to fix the appliance to the work surface to help stop it moving around when you're using it. And it definitely feels like a robust, well-made product. So to make our french fries we're going to need to peel some potatoes. And I'm going to use this electric potato peeler which I have shown you on a previous video. It's really cool, we just lift up this top spike, push a potato onto the spikes at the bottom, then lower down the top spike into the potato. Lift up the cutting arm up to the top, then turn it on. It rotates the potato and the cutting arm slowly works its way down from the top to the bottom, while all the time moving in and out to the contour of the potato. And when it gets to the bottom, it even turns itself off. Pretty cool, huh? Then we can just remove our potato and place on the next one, ready for peeling. It definitely saves a lot of time, but you've probably noticed it does actually leave a little bit of skin at the top and the bottom. And if you want, you can of course remove this with a hand peeler. But I think it's a great gadget. And for cleaning, you can easily remove the cutting blade to give it a wash. So we're ready to make our french fries. I placed a chopping board at the front to collect them, opened it up, and placed in a potato. Then we need to push it up to the cutting blades, and with a bit of force, squeeze it through. And there we go, let's take a look. Well, we've got these perfectly square, nice cut french fries. <laughs> that was easy. I'm trying another potato. And again, it goes through easily, the long handle really does help with the leverage. I'm pushing another one through. And it works brilliantly, it's taken no time at all to cut these three potatoes into perfectly uniform french fries. I'm impressed. And to cook them, I'm just placing them onto an oven tray. Then I'm using this sunflower oil squirter to spray over a light coating of oil. Then they're ready to bake. Now let's have a look at cleaning it. To wash the push plate, there's a little catch at the back which we can lift up. This releases it and we can lift it out to clean. To remove the cutting plates at the front, we undo these four wing nuts. Then lift the whole thing up. Do be careful though, the blades are very sharp. We can also remove the stainless steel side plates. They were in contact with the potatoes, so they'll need a washdown too. But it's easy enough to clean, and all in all, I think it's a fantastic product. And if you'd like to buy any of the items in this video, there's links in the description. Next we're going to take a look at this gadget, which is 8 kitchen tools in one. When we take it out of the packaging, it's been stacked together upside down so it fits in a smaller box. So turn it around the right way, and it's in the shape of a bottle. It looks quite attractive, and each one of these coloured layers is a different kitchen utensil. So let's see what we've got. This blue one is obviously a juicer. Then we've got several other weird and wonderful designs. And the container at the bottom is actually a measuring cup too, so that's a useful addition. Let's start with this thing. It's like a grid of small square holes. Any idea what it is? Well, we clip it into the measuring cup, and it's actually for pulverising hard-boiled eggs. So I'm peeling one to give it a go. Sit it on top, then using a spoon or something, I guess you could use your fingers, push it down through the grid. As we push it through, it drops down into the container, and to be fair, it seems to be working pretty well. You do have to be a bit careful not to spill it over the sides. But keep mashing it down, and we've got this really cool minced up egg. You could use this for cooking with for various recipes, but I like to add a bit of mayonnaise, mix it together, and add some ground pepper too, to make a delicious egg mayonnaise sandwich filling. Using the egg masher makes it really light and fluffy. The next thing we're going to look at is this orange ring. 
Apparently, this is actually an egg yolk separator, and it works by placing it onto the cup and just cracking your egg. And this one seems to work well. It catches the egg yolk and all the white runs through the holes. Again, perfect if you need to separate them for a recipe or something. The next one to look at is this one. This is actually a fine grater and it's designed for things like hard cheese. I clipped it onto the beaker and I'm going to test it out with this parmesan. And it's actually really impressive. The grater is quite small so you don't get much space to go back and forward with, but still it seems to be working really well. It should be easy enough to clean afterwards. And it's definitely done a good job of grating. The next one to look at is this green layer. This one is really curious. It's just got loads of little bumps all the way over and a sort of collecting channel around the side. And it's actually a grinding plate to mash up things like horseradish and ginger. I'm going to test it out with this knob of ginger. I used a teaspoon to peel off the skin on the end. And let's see how well it works. I'm pushing it down quite firmly and rubbing it back and forth over the bumps. And I was quite surprised but it's actually mashing it up really well. And it hasn't taken long at all to make this really fine ginger puree. You can collect it with a teaspoon and use it for cooking. Or you could just wash off this whole grinding plate into your recipe. And you can see the juice which we've also collected. The next one we're going to look at is this flexible silicon ring. And it's got these lumpy nodules running around the inside. So apparently this is actually to help you open jars. It fits around the top and helps to give you more grip. Yeah, well that works. You can use it on smaller jars too. Or even with screw-on bottle tops. The final layer is this juicer. It seems pretty small, but let's see how well it works. I'm clipping it into the measuring cup, then cutting an orange in half, and let's give it a go. So, like a regular juicer, it seems to work pretty well. The juice runs down into the cup underneath, and the juicing tray collects any fruit or seeds. The only thing I found was that because it is quite small, it does fill up pretty quickly with fruit. And you've got to be careful it doesn't block the juice from running through into the cup. After I juiced one orange, I had to clean it out. I carried on juicing a number of oranges, and because it is quite small, I did lose a bit of juice down the side, but it definitely does work. And I filled up the measuring cup with nice fresh juice. And I'm going to be pouring it into this bottle to keep it in the fridge. That's where the last part of our kitchen utensil comes in. This bottle top doubles up as a funnel. It's got this green silicon nozzle that pushes onto the end, which makes it perfect for filling up bottles with a smaller neck. But I'm dropping it right inside this bottle and using it to decant our orange juice. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.